Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is my April Knitting Corner. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you everything that I have knit in the month of April as well as what I am currently working on for May and what I'm planning on working on and then lastly we'll finish up with just a couple of yarn acquisitions. So first let's start off with my Herringbone Hill sweater. So I has I was working on this last month and so I was able to finish it. Really happy how this one turned out. So this one I held two yarns together. This is Drops Air held with drops uh, kid silk and the air color I think was dusty pink and the drops kid silk was in the colorway pink pearl so this one is really nice and lovely and soft and squishy um, I wore this on Easter because it just felt like a good Easter sweater uh, the halo on this is really incredible I don't know if you can sort of see that in the camera but it has a really nice halo and I have wet blocked it so I mean that halo still existed after uh, dunking it in water for 15 minutes. Um, so this is the first time I've ever done any sort of cable work. And so this one has just two large cables running down the center along with some fisherman's rib. I really like the design. Um, wearing the sweater, I think the only thing is I wish it was just a little bit longer. Uh, I used the length that the pattern suggested for it, but I think I just would have liked it a little bit longer. Um, I've been wearing it with a button up like long sleeve shirt underneath it so that gives me some of that sort of extra length to cover up my tummy um, but I, I sort of wish that this was one that I could wear without an, a shirt just because it's so soft and fluffy and lovely so yeah really like how this turned out other than the fact that I wish it was just a little bit longer and this is a free pattern from Drop. so again I will link it all down in the description box um, if you are interested in doing it as well so the next one I worked on was the Willard Fairer Isle sweater. Um, I think when I had showed this to you last month, all I had done was like just the ribbing for the neck. So I have the rest of the sweater complete. Get back a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so this one, again, I went with the actual directions on this for how long to make it. And I really like the length on this. It hits me about like mid hip, which seems pretty nice. So this one is made in the Drops uh, Extra Fine Merino. Uh, so this is a super wash. This is the first time I've ever used a super wash yarn. I'm not entirely in love with super wash. I would say it's not great for color work because in the color work, you really kind of need something with like grip to keep things in place, to keep the floats from like, um, bagging out and stuff like that. And the, this yarn is like so soft and smooth that it doesn't really have that grip. So that's unfortunate. Um, I've, when I blocked it, it got absolutely huge. So I threw it in the dryer, which was an experience I was really scared for. Um, so I threw it in the dryer for about 20, 30 minutes and it definitely um, shrunk back up as it dried. And then I like laid it flat to finish drying and it shrunk up some more. So it, it's, it seems to be back to the original size it was prior to blocking it, which is good. Um, things I would improve on this is that I forgot to go down a needle size on my color work. Most of the time I find my color work gauge is a little bit looser than my stockinette gauge. So I need to go down a needle size when I, I'm doing the color work and I forgot to do that on this. So it's kind of like visible that the color work section is sort of larger stitches than the rest of the body. But um, you live and you learn. And I still have worn this a couple of times since finishing it. So. I, Despite all of the things that I don't love about this sweater, I've worn it a lot because it, it's a nice, easy one to throw on. It's very soft, so like next to skin softness. So that's been really nice. Um, I like the neutrality of this gray. And yeah, so I mean, there's definitely things on the sweater that I would improve, but I've been wearing it a lot, so I can't really complain too much about it. And then the next one that I made, um, I made this one while I was feeling kind of sick for a week, so I didn't like really get out of bed for a full week. So this is the one that I made while I was in bed. Um, and this one is using some of that Drops Wish yarn that I got um, in a recent haul from Wool Warehouse. And I, I put a video of that haul, so I can link that up there. Um, so this one is the Drops Wish yarn, and it's in the colorway forest i believe and the pattern that i've used is the petite knit louisiana sweater so i just did a single 
single strand of that wish yarn which is like a super bulky yarn um, and I really like how that turns out again this is one where I think I would have preferred it to be just a little bit longer I don't mind when I wear it with um, leggings I think it's fine but I think I need it to be a little bit longer if I were to wear it with jeans I again I really really liked this yarn it's super bulky and squishy. Um, again, very soft. I have no problem wearing this next to skin. I believe it's like a mixture of alpaca and wool and cotton, I want to say. It's like a blown yarn, so it has like a cotton core and then the the, the animal-based fibers are blown into it. Um, so this one is a really easy knit. I would say that this pattern, the Louisiana sweater, would be great for a beginner because you just have like the make one left and make one light raglan increases on um, the shoulder and then the body is knit straight with no increases or decreases and the arms are knit straight with no decreases or increases. But it's kind of cool because the arms are knit straight but it still gives you that sort of like balloon effect because it's knit straight and your arms naturally tend to, to taper but I think that's really cool and then it just has you know a little little gathered cuff at the end so I liked the sweater um the only thing I would say I did have some issues with the yarn I had one ball of yarn that had like multiple knots in it and then it also had a section where um there like wasn't any of the animal fiber in it and I was I just went ahead and knit with it anyway. There's about eight or nine inches. Let's see if I can put this closer to the screen. There's like eight or nine inches right here where all you saw was like the core, like there wasn't any of fiber in there. So it does make that little line across it. That's in the back, so it's not too much of a problem. But um, yeah, like I said, it was just that one ball that was like bad. And I don't pre-wind my balls. I just use them straight from the skein. So, um, it's not something that I could have caught ahead of time. And the only, the other thing is on this sleeve, you can see that where I changed balls right about here, um, and it, they sort of, even though they're the same dye lot, they're different colors. Like this, this ball has more of that core showing, and then this ball is more of that deeper, darker green. Um, I went ahead and kept it. Tony said it's fine. I do have two balls of this left over. So if it really, really bothers me, I can go ahead and frog back to this section and start on a different ball and maybe hopefully get a more consistent transition. I didn't notice that issue anywhere else where I transitioned between balls. I And I think this one took about, I think I had 11. I think I used nine balls to make this sweater. So I used a lot less than I needed. Um, I'm planning on making another one of these. I want to do one um, in white or like an off-white with Drops Melody, which is like a really fluffy alpaca yarn. And um, that one I would hold double strand. I think that would be really nice. But I, I quite like this sweater as a fast knit. Um, again, because it's like bulky, I think you use like a US 13 needle on it. So it went really, really fast. Um, and it's nice neutral. I wish there were some shaping in this like I wish the back was longer than the front because I do see that it sort of like rides up in the back on me so maybe next time I do it I might try to see if I can't figure out how to put a little bit of like German short rows in the back now that I've done that a couple of times with other sweaters I think I could figure out how to add that to this pattern I don't know I'll think about it let me know if you have any suggestions for for adding that sort of like back shaping on a raglan sweater so, and then the last sweater I made this month that I was able to make four is the one that I'm wearing now, which is the Avena sweater from Knit Love Wool. That's Jennifer Steingass's. Uh, this is the third pattern I've done of hers and I'm in love. I went back and got three more of her patterns because she has a lot of color work. Obviously, I love doing color work and um, I've been really happy with her patterns. So on this one, I've used the Drops Soft tweed and the main color of it is the color marzipan and then um have guacamole on sort of like the bottom of the branches and then grizzly bear at the top of the branches i really liked the way she transitioned between the colors you so you still only ever held two colors at once but like you would do a row of grizzly bear and then a row of guacamole and then back and forth and so so it's sort of like gives you a nice gradation between those two colors. Uh, I saw some people use even more colors throughout there. I think it would be really cool to do one in like shades of yellow or stuff like that, but very, very happy with how this guy turned out. Uh, the drops, so the drops soft tweed, 
I don't know if I'd necessarily call it soft. Um, I'm wearing this with just a tank top underneath it right now, and it's okay. I tend not to be too sensitive to itchiness, but um, it's not the softest thing I've ever felt. It does have some alpaca in it, so it it smells kind of funny when I was blocking it, uh, and it has those sort of like longer hairs that I seems pretty typical of the alpaca yarns that I've used in the past. Uh, but I do like the effect. Uh, the marzipan color that I use as the main color doesn't really have very much tweed in it at all, much variation, just very subtle. Whereas the the colors that I used in the detail work had a lot more variation, which was really fun to see like those dark greens or light yellow portions. So um, I would use the drops soft tweed again, I think. Uh, there are some other colors that look really pretty that I wanna try. And I'm really happy with how the sweater turned out. So on this one, like I said, this one has some German short rose shaping in the back and I really like how it turned out. Most of her patterns do have like a rolled neck and I quite like that. I mean, it's nice cause you can, I don't, I don't love doing ribbing, but I'm getting better at it. Um, but it's nice to have the rolled neck because it feels like you get to start right away on the color work. You, like you only do like five or six rows before, you only do like five or six rows before you get started in the fun stuff. So I kind of like that you just get to get started right away. Um, for the cuffs and along the bottom edge of this guy, I did a half twisted rib. So I, I did the knit stitches twisted, but then I left the pearls normal. Um, I just wanted to try something a little bit different. Like I said, I'm getting better at the one by one rib. And so I just wanted to try something a little bit different. I do like how it looks. I feel like it looks a lot like sharper and cleaner to have that half twisted rib, but it definitely took me a lot longer to do than the normal one by one. So this one, I went a little bit longer on it just because I liked the way that I liked the length that this guy was sitting on me. So I think, I think the pattern says to do 10 inches from the underarm. And I think I went 12 inches from the underarm before I started my ribbing. And I liked how that set a little bit better. Again, it's sitting right at my hip. Um, this one, I chose a size or two sizes down because I feel like most of my sweaters were a little bit big on me because I'm so terrified that I'm gonna make something too small for me to wear. Um, so normally I think for my bust measurement, I should be making a size D in her patterns. But for this guy, I chose a size B as in boy. This one was like, it was supposed to be like my exact bust measurement. Um, Maybe I just need to redo my measurements. Maybe that's the problem why everything is coming out too big. I don't know. But when I blocked it, I blocked it to a 38 inch bust, which I should, I think my bust is 37 and a half. So, but I still feel like I have a lot of ease in there. It's not tight by any means and it's certainly not negative ease. Um, but I do like the fit on this a little bit better. I think the sleeves on this sweater are a little bit tighter fitting, which I kind of like. Um, that's probably because I went down those two sizes. So those are all of the things that I have knit up or completed in the month of April. So now let's take a look really fast at what I'm working on. So the weather is sort of warming up here, but because I'm in like the mountainous regions, we still have pretty cold mornings and nights. So I was wanting to do some more knitwear for this sort of like transitional springtime period. I really wanted to do the anchor summer tea from petite knits and i have this drops baby merino um, i bought this one on accident i meant to buy extra fine and then i got the baby instead so the baby is like a very thin i think they categorize it as like a sport weight on ravelry um, but i'm sort of going to use it as a fingering because it's quite quite thin and I wanna do that anchor tee. So I was all excited. I got all my balls of yarn out and ready to go. And I went to go start knitting and I realized that I didn't have needles small enough. So that pattern uses, I think it's a US, no, no, no. It's a, a two millimeter and a three millimeter needle. So it's a US one and a half and two and a half. And, I, and my needles don't go down that small. So I went ahead and I ordered um, some more tips so that I could get this started, but those haven't come in yet, but I am planning on working on that anchor tee this month. So instead, I cast on something different yesterday. So this is the Piper sweater. Um, and I got pretty far yesterday, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so here's what I got. So this is the first time I've ever done one or knitted a sweater flat. Like I said before, I really wanna get better at purling and I felt like the best way to get better at it was to just go ahead and do a sweater that required a lot of pearls. So this one, 
it's not a lot a lot of pearls because it alternates between a stockinette like two rows of stockinette and then two rows of garter so i really only have to pearl one row out of every four um, and it also has alternating yarn so i'm alternating between the color whipped cream and the color chai latte but i really like hopefully you can see how that's looking up so it has like the stripes in both texture and color so this one this is the bottom front i believe so you knit all the way up and then you sort of like cast off around the neckline and continue on the shoulders and then knit to the back so you'll just have one long like poncho looking piece um, and then you do the sleeve separately and then seam it all together so the whole thing will just be in this same like color texture variation, but I thought it looked really nice and really happy how it's turning out. The reason why I'm categorizing this is sort of like a um, spring summer sweater. Well, the pattern itself calls itself a summer sweater. So there's that. But also the yarn that I'm using is this Lions brand comfy cotton blend. So it's a 50-50 blend, I believe. Yeah, 50-50 cotton polyester. So I've never used... Um, those fibers before. I'm not a huge fan of polyester, but um, it feels pretty soft and I do like the cotton aspect of it. So the, the idea is that the cotton will be a little bit lighter, something that, I, that won't like hold in heat as much. And this one will be a lot nicer because again, like the superwash, I can just throw it in the laundry and don't have to worry about it as much. So um, yeah, so I have two balls of whipped cream and two balls of this one, which is the, the chai latte and that should be more than enough for the whole sweater. So really excited how this one is turning out. And I will say even just a day into it, I can honestly say that I think my pearls are getting better. So there's that. Like I don't mind doing the pearl row, if that makes sense. Like it feels like it does, before whenever I would have to do a pearl, row I felt like it like slowed me down an awful lot and that it was like a slog to get through but now I feel like I'm, I'm sort, of, sort of getting my rhythm with it so happy that it, that's improving and it means that maybe down the road I can make some cardigans and stuff like that because I really like wearing cardigans um, but I've been hesitant to knit one just because I didn't like doing pearls so hopefully this will up my game on pearls and get me to a better place with that. So those right now are the only two plans that I have for this month. We'll see how much I, I get to. Um, I am noticing that the amount of knitting that I'm doing is causing some wrist pain. Um, particularly color work seems to make it worse. I think it's, I do more twisting with the color work as I'm like picking the different colors. Um, so I'm trying to sort of uh, scale back a little bit. Like this particular sweater, I think it took me I think I was working on it for three weeks, whereas normally I, I only take a week to make a sweater. So I am trying to like scale back a little bit on how much time I'm spending knitting, um, but hopefully I can get these two projects done, if not a little bit more. So the last section is going to be yarn acquisitions. I only made one purchase this month, which I felt pretty proud about. Um, and that is the It's Tex Let Lopi yarn. I was really interested in, in um, trying some of this Icelandic yarn and Interestingly enough, uh, I had been waiting for Wool Warehouse to have this come back in stock and it never was coming back in stock. So I found this shop in Iceland that was selling it. And it's just funny because it's a shop that I have visited personally. So we went to Iceland a couple years ago now. Um, this was pre-COVID and we had visited the shop and it was before I had started knitting or anything like that. And I, I bought like, um, like a knitted headband uh, that I wear a lot on my morning walks and we bought a nice wool blanket. But so it's kind of cool that this is a shop that I've actually been to in person and they had the Let Lopi, they had all of the colors that I wanted. So I went ahead and purchased from there. It ended up being cheaper than anywhere else I could find. Like even with the overseas shipping, it was still cheaper than buying it locally. Um, and all the stores that had them locally didn't have the colors in stock that I wanted. So I thought I'd switch you to the top down view so you could get a closer look at all the Let Lopi yarns. Um, I'm really excited about them. Some of the colors aren't exactly what I thought I was going to get based on um, the online images, but I, I still like a lot of them. I think I'm just going to like tweak some of my plans a little bit. So if you're not familiar with the Let Lopi yarn, it is from Iceland. It's using Icelandic sheep um, or wool from Icelandic sheep. It's sort of a rustic style yarn. It feels a little bit scratchy. I don't know that this would necessarily be a sweater that you would 
want to wear next to skin um, but from my reading it's like a really hard wearing it's great in terms of like keeping you dry so it's it's like slightly waterproof because it does have some of those like guard hairs in there um, and it's lightweight so I'm excited to make some sweaters from this first up I got about eight skeins eight or nine skeins of this rust colorway uh, which is really really nice I thought it was going to be a little bit more orange. Um, this one, I, I would call it more like mm, chestnut maybe. Um, it's like a very warm toned brown, a little bit browner than I thought it was going to be, but still really, really pretty. So my idea with this was to do the main sweater in the rust. So like this. And then to do some color work in the color golden. And then I have Lagoon to go with it. I wasn't sure if Lagoon was going to be uh, enough of a contrast. So I also picked up, I think this is called Glacier to use just in case. And I think Glacier looks better in terms of contrast. I don't know that I love Glacier as much with this rust colorway. Um, and this golden is not exactly what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit more yellow. This this feels like a truer green to me, like um, a spring green or grass green, like new growth, that sort of green. Uh, so I, was, I thought it was going to be a little bit more yellow. So that was a surprise. Um, so I'm going to have to think about this sweater a little bit. I kind of... I mean, I like the combination of these colors, but I think that I'm, I'm gonna need to get another color to act as a contrast point in between these or else it's gonna get, look a little muddied. So then I got a sweater's quantity worth of this color, which is called Moore, M-O-O-R-E. This is definitely my kind of color. It's like a olivey green with a lot of variegation in it. I really really love these sort of colors so I got eight of these and my idea is to pair it with golden which again I showed you in the last one I think these two green colors look really well together and then I think this is light beige so I wanted to do um, another color work sweater where the main color is going to be this sort of olivey green and then the accents are going to be this light beige and golden color and then last up I picked up about nine of these which I think is in the color gray like not light gray not dark gray just gray and I wanted to contrast that with the mimosa color so if you had watched my video in last month in March, I had really wanted to do a gray and yellow sweater, but then when it came time to knitting it up, um, the gray, the lighter gray that I had chosen just didn't offer enough contrast with the yellow. So I, I used turquoise instead. So I wanted to make sure that I could do a sweater that had a yellow and gray contrast. Uh, so that's why I went with this sort of like mid to darker tone gray because I knew that that would be enough to sort of like um, highlight against the mimosa yellow color and I'm really excited how that's going to look. So for sure this this sweater is going to happen and the green one will happen as I intended. The only one that I'm a little bit iffy on is this uh, rust colored one and I think it's just going to be a matter of switching out one or two of the contrast color balls so that I get the what I'm looking for. And for those, I'll probably just shop locally. I'll probably go to Fancy Tiger Crafts um, locally so that I can sort of like look at the colors in person and really pick out what I want. Again, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive to buy it that way, um, but I'm only gonna be buying one or two balls in contrast. So it shouldn't be too bad. So I hope everyone has enjoyed my April knitting quarter and I will see everyone next month. Take care.